Good morning. I guess we can get started. Good morning. My name is Joe Masabni. I'm the Extension Vegetable Specialist at Dallas Center, part of the Control Environment Agriculture Team. Today, I will be talking to you about how I start my seeds, um, especially when dealing with uh, old seeds to guarantee uh, that uh, they are alive and instead of waste time filling flats and seeding etc what I call water bath it's not really priming you can look up seed priming uh, this is more in the sense of accelerated germination so let me turn the camera and I'll show you what I do so this is what I call the water bath You have an air pump that you get from any aquarium store and air stones. You don't need two air stones. It's just that this pump comes with two outlets and I didn't want to leave one blowing air and making loud noise. So I used two air stones here. And I use these uh, T, what do you call them? T strainers. Here is the new version that I got. I hope that these will be more sturdy and last longer. I'm using these tea strainers uh, because I'm testing more than one variety at a time. If I was only testing one variety, I can just dump the seeds in the water and they will be fine and they will germinate and they will do great. So uh, this, these have been in the water for a while and I already took some out and seeded them and anything that was not germinated, I put back uh, to see if they can germinate some more. And look, see, they're doing great. They're more than ready. You, at this stage, when the roots are long, you have to be careful when you move them out from here into here. So you have to be careful when you move them out so you don't break the the roots uh, tips so basically i have to be very careful and very tedious job one at a time these are stuck i've gone through the sieve one at a time take it and put it here one at a time but at least i know that they are germinated and they are alive. These pepper seeds are from 2008, 2010. So I knew I was concerned that they may not be alive. Actually, our technician was gonna throw them away, gave up on them. Well, let me show you what we did, what we found out. Um, but first, let me show you the f what comes after they are germinated. After they are germinated, I put them in, in flats, 72 cell flats, 200 cell flats, whatever you have. Uh, these are 72 cell flats, so, you know, six pack, each, each is six pack. So they're about like one inch by one inch each cell. This variety number eight, still no germination. This variety number two, doing very well. Actually, when I was doing here, you see there's multiple seeds in one because uh, when I first I started transplanting the one or I mean moving the seeds from the water bath to here I started working with the ones that uh, already had roots and then uh, the ones that did not have roots just in case they were not alive I put two or three seeds at once but look 100% germination this is not a waste if I have two seeds here this is not a waste and this is a great time at this stage to do that you can use a knife a spoon remove them gently you know uh, you can separate them or you can put them in a water bath to separate them and now you have two seedlings 
that you can separate and put back here okay so so and that's the plan what i want to do here is that all the doubles and triples will go into individual in individual uh, cells this is from the first test that i did i did a few seeds i mean a few seeds at a time from all the uh, 10 varieties that i was trying to germinate the old seeds you see four five seven four five hundred percent germination seven i don't know maybe fifty percent eight nothing i wasn't sure if the seed swollen and like they wanted more time to germinate so when i put him here i did not see the root tip so that was a gamble so even after what two weeks now they still not uh, germinated so this eight variety number eight which is the same i'm not expecting anything to germinate here so so this uh, that i'm gonna use this here flat as uh, to, to separate when i separate the doubles and triples from variety number two put them here because i gave up on variety number eight that's not gonna make it so instead of throwing the 10 varieties that I had just because they were 13 years old from 2008, 14 years old now, I was able to recover a minimum of 50% and some varieties 100%. I think that this is a better approach uh, for testing old seeds to speed up germination like when I do seedless watermelon, that's the, this is the best way to guarantee 100% germination with seedless watermelon, which is notorious for poor germination if you start directly here. Okay? So old seeds, difficult to germinate seeds, a water bath like this is ideal. Um, start with clean trays, start with fresh media, uh, get a dome so like this here what I did is I filled it uh, filled it the bottom tray does not have water does not have holes so I filled it with water and uh, I closed the lid and I know I can go for three four five days and not worry about watering too much because if you water too much this is what will happen you'll see a green mold algae forming from over water well, this I did not water. This was just water at the bottom of the tray. Now it's all absorbed. But because there's no seeds using up that water, it formed the algae. You don't see the algae here or here. Okay, water bath. Look up seed priming for different ways. This is not really priming in the true sense of uh, priming definition. But... Um, um, I more like accelerating germination now since I have uh, more time this is uh, kind of a short presentation I want to show you uh, the something else I'm planning for the spring garden remember the topic of this presentation of this series is my backyard garden since it's uh, 23 degrees outside and everything is frozen and yesterday Dallas Center was shut down because of the winter storm that we had i am in the process of planning for my spring planting i have 10 pepper varieties i'm i have another 10 tomato varieties i have melon and squash and grafted watermelon that i will be planting also and share with the, a grower Okay, so how do you, I've, I have a video on grafting. At the time it was uh, grafting tomatoes. This was done um, a few days ago on uh, watermelon and squash. So the rootstock is a squash, which is a resistant variety. And the watermelon is the edible watermelon that uh, we want. Uh, a brief recap, uh, brief uh, story on uh, grafting and its benefit is very popular in Asian countries because uh, they have, you can imagine a person with half an acre of land 
and has been farming it for a hundred years with his family and uh, they have soil diseases that nothing can cure or fix. So the only way to be able to grow in that plot of land is to use resistant varieties and like wild relatives of that plant that is resistant and well adapted to grow in that soil and then you graft the crop that you want to harvest. So I'm not eating the squash because that's not the edible variety. It's just a relative, uh, I mean, uh, strong, uh, um, strong root system, um, they're resistant to diseases. I'm interested in the watermelon variety that I'm a graft that uh, I want to harvest. And you see, it's a simple graft, just a clip and put them together. The clip has to be tight enough so that they uh, hold them together. The diameter should between the scion and the rootstock have to be close enough so they get a chance to join. This was done four or five days ago. I put them in the dome with this dome cover. I put them inside in the dark room so they get a chance to heal. And out of all of these that I grafted, this one collapsed. This one is dead. This one did not make it. So that's not bad. I mean, it looks like it took, but then it wilted. So sometimes they wilt because they, uh, the scion and rootstock were not touching each other well, so it wilted. This looks like it was touching, but I don't know why it, it died. But anyway, there are a few that I did not graft because they were small at the time, like this one. This one was too big when I tried to graft it because the diameter was too thick, so I just cut it. It's still there, still alive. And these two, were not, these two or three were not grafted. But otherwise, they're all well. Now that they are healed, you know, they need like four or five days to heal. Then you slow, slowly transition them out to sun. And I need to start adding fertilizer so that uh, they will uh, uh, grow aggressively. What happens is that once it starts growing and the stem gets thicker, it will push the clip out. So if you can recover that clip, great. If not, just buy these clips. You find them online, like 200 clips uh, for about $25, $30. I don't know what's the price now. Everything's going up. But I bought them at the time, 200 clips for uh, uh, $25. Notice something that I did is I grafted a little bit high because when I transplanted in the field, I want to make sure that this union does not touch the soil, okay? Or is not buried. Like I will plant it maybe to this depth here, but not to here. Because if I bury this union and then the scion makes its own roots, I lose the benefit of the graft. So for most of them, the graft was relatively high this one is kind of low, so I have to be careful where, when I transplant them in the field. So this is the time. Uh, you should start thinking of uh, your spring garden. I mean, depending on where you are, you are a month, month and a half away. If you don't have seeds started like, like me, you should start them immediately. Peppers takes four to six weeks to reach the ideal size. And this year, I'm going to test peppers uh, that I seeded this year that you see here. I have extra plants that I saved from last spring. I moved them in the greenhouse and they are still alive. And I have plants that are uh, three months old. So I will have plants that are a year old, plants that are three, four months old, and brand new seedlings that I'm going to plant in the garden and, and you'll see how they perform um, uh, in future episodes. So get ready, get your uh, supplies ready, your pesticides, your fertilizers, clean your backpack sprayer. Any day it starts warming up, um, clean the weeds, add more compost, uh, start seeding indoors or if you don't have the space, better uh, 
uh, buy the plants instead of invest all this, and you don't do a good job. Uh, you kill them. I've, I see a lot of homeowners that uh, end up killing the plants because they overwater their flats uh, and uh, they run into a lot of issues. These here are extra watermelon plants that are waiting to be grafted. So I seeded more watermelon and I seeded more squash and I seeded more watermelon. So this was batch number one and this will be batch number two. If I'm lucky, I'll have another 72 grafted watermelon and here hopefully another 30 and there maybe another uh, 60, uh, 40, 50. So if I'm lucky, I'll have 150 grafted watermelon uh, to test and you'll see the results in future episodes. With that, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, we'll see you next time.